YouTube is by far the most popular video sharing platform in the world. Most of us associate YouTube with Google, and given that Google acquired YouTube very early on, and the fact that Google has poured in billions to keep YouTube up and running, I do think Google deserves most of the credit for YouTube's success today. With that being said though, Google did not actually found YouTube. They actually bought YouTube for $1.65 billion from three guys in October of 2006. So how did these three guys end up founding YouTube? What have they been doing since the acquisition and where are they today? Starting off, we have Jawed Karim. Karim was born on October 5th, 1979 in Merzburg, East Germany. Both of his parents worked as researchers. His father was a researcher at 3M and his mother was a biochemistry researcher at the University of Minnesota. At a very young age, Karim and his family would leave communist East Germany and immigrate to West Germany and this is where Karim spent most of his early childhood. At age 12 or 13, Karim would move once again, this time to St. Paul, Minnesota. Karim ended up attending the local high school there called St. Paul Central High School and eventually he would end up attending the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Like many tech founders, Karim ended up leaving campus to become an employee at PayPal. However, he did not actually drop out. Karim continued his education remotely and finished up his bachelor's in computer science while working at PayPal. This wasn't a fast process by any means though, as it took him 7 years to earn his bachelor's. But he did end up graduating eventually. In the meantime, Karim met two guys at PayPal who he would end up founding YouTube with. According to Karim, the motivation for creating YouTube came from his inability to find popular clips online. Apparently, Karim was unable to find clips of the 38th Super Bowl halftime show or the 2004 Indian Tsunami online. At the start of 2005, Karim and the two friends from PayPal acquired the domain YouTube.com and developed the website over the next few months. Around the same time, Karim would record and post the first video on YouTube on April 23rd, 2005 called Me at the Zoo. Though Karim played a key role in the initial development of YouTube, Karim actually stepped away quite early on. While Karim enjoyed entrepreneurship, he also loved education and he preferred to spend his time pursuing a graduate degree instead of building YouTube. Karim would later admit that this decision was definitely not the norm. Anyway, Karim served as an informal advisor to YouTube as he completed his master's in computer science at Stanford. But this decision significantly reduced his payout from YouTube. When Google bought YouTube, Kareem received a total of 137,443 shares of Google, which was worth about $64 million at the time. If he held on to that stake, he would easily be on the path to becoming a billionaire today. But Kareem really had no interest in the billionaire lifestyle. Kareem says that while his success in entrepreneurship is great, he just wants to be a professor. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Kareem actually ended up becoming a professor or at least there's no indication of that online. However, Kareem did end up going down the education path as opposed to the billionaire retirement path. Kareem finished up his master's at Stanford and co-founded a company called University Ventures or Y Ventures. Through Y Ventures, Kareem and a couple of other distinguished entrepreneurs basically offered mentorship, consulting, and access to capital to up-and-coming startups. Some of the biggest companies they've worked with are Airbnb, Reddit, Palantir, Postmates, and Opendoor. Aside from helping other startups, Kareem was also notable for opposing Google's decision to mandate Google Plus accounts to comment on YouTube in 2013. But that's pretty much it with Kareem. After YouTube, he basically just continued his education and went on to invest into and coach other startups. Moving on, we have Chad Hurley, who was definitely the most involved co-founder of YouTube. Chad was born on January 24th, 1977 in Reading, Pennsylvania. Unlike many other tech founders who are extremely talented in STEM subjects, Chad was actually quite artistically inclined. In fact, he often sold many of his sketches and artworks during his elementary school days. As he moved into high school, he did develop a passion for technology. But even then, technology wasn't the focal point of his life. Throughout high school, Chad was a star runner in the school's cross-country program, and he even won two Pennsylvania State titles in 1992 and 1994. Moving on to college, Chad actually revisited his childhood passion and ended up majoring in fine arts at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. After university, like Reem, Chad also ended up at PayPal. But he wasn't working on the tech side. 
Chad was actually working on PayPal's UI and the company's logo. Chad also has a different story when it comes to the origins of YouTube. Chad claims that the inspiration for creating YouTube came from his inability to share videos from a dinner party online. Anyway, whichever one is the real story, after the trio founded YouTube in early 2005, Chad became the company's first CEO. Though he was technically a CEO, his initial responsibility mainly consisted of managing the tagging and video sharing aspects of YouTube. In 2006, Chad was ranked 28th on Business 2.0's list of 50 people who matter now. I think Business 2.0 was spot on with Chad. During the acquisition, Chad would walk away with the biggest cash out out of the three founders. He received a total of 694,087 shares of Google directly and 41,232 shares of Google through a trust. In total, this added up to a solid $345 million or over 5 times more than Kareem. Chad didn't leave YouTube after the acquisition either. In fact, Chad actually stayed CEO of YouTube up until the end of 2010, when he resigned to focus on other business endeavors. Right after he stepped away from YouTube, Chad co-founded Avos Systems. Avos Systems was an incubator company that enabled app developers to develop and test their apps in real time. The company originally operated as an incubator and helped develop several apps. But Chad always had his eye on one specific app, which was Mixbit. Mixbit was a mobile video sharing platform, and Chad hoped that he could revolutionize mobile video sharing with Mixbit, just like he revolutionized computer-based video sharing with YouTube. But as we now know, YouTube ended up dominating the mobile space as well. Though Mixbit never reached the heights of YouTube, the project wasn't a complete waste. In 2018, BlueJeans bought certain parts of Mixbit, with plans of implementing the technology into enterprise video conferencing solutions. In the meantime, Chad has made a couple of notable investments within the sports world as well. In 2014, Chad bought a part of the LA football club with Magic Johnson. Later on, he invested into the Golden State Warriors. And just earlier this year, he invested into Leeds United Football Club. Aside from sports teams, Chad even invested into a Formula 1 team called USF1 team in 2009. But unfortunately, this team never actually ended up competing. And that's pretty much what Chad's been up to. He stayed as YouTube CEO after the acquisition. He tried to create a mobile video sharing platform. And he bought a couple of sports teams here and there. And that brings us into YouTube's last co-founder, Steve Chen. Steve Chen was born on August 25th, 1978 in Taipei, Taiwan. Steve spent the first eight years of his life in Taiwan, after which his family moved to Prospect Heights, Illinois. Steve attended local middle schools and high schools before enrolling in the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign just like Kareem. At university, he majored in computer science and he would graduate in 2002. Following his education, he of course got a job at PayPal where he met Kareem and Chad. But unlike the other two, Steve didn't jump straight into YouTube. Steve actually got a job at Facebook and he worked there for several months before diving into YouTube. At YouTube, Steve was appointed as the chief technology officer where he ensured that YouTube could support all of the incoming traffic. In 2006, Steve was also ranked 28th on Business 2.0's list of 50 people who matter now alongside Chad. And later that year during the acquisition, Steve received almost the same cash out as Chad. Steve received 625,366 shares of Google directly and 68,721 shares through a trust. At the time, the shares were worth $325 million, but now they're worth $1.78 billion. Like Chad, Steve stayed at YouTube after the acquisition up until 2009. In 2009, he left YouTube, but he stayed at Google. However, he would leave Google as well in 2011 to start a new company with Chad, which was of course, Avos Systems. Steve was super interested in developing an incubator platform for app developers, but he wasn't that interested in creating another video sharing platform. So, when Chad wanted to pivot Avos Systems into Mixbit, Steve would leave the company. It wasn't an intense corporate fallout or anything like that though. Steve and Chad simply respectfully chose to go different ways. As Chad went on to develop Mixbit, Steve would go back to Google joining Google Ventures. Google Ventures focuses on investing into startups and helping them grow and they're basically another company incubator. Given that this is what Steve was interested in doing with Avos Systems, it's not surprising that Google Ventures is where he ended up. In 2016, Steve actually launched something called Nom.com. This website was focused on live streaming food related content created by users. Ironically, Steve parted ways with Chad because he did not want to create another video sharing platform. But just a couple of years later, that's exactly what he ended up doing. 
Unfortunately though, this endeavor didn't last too long and would be shut down just one year later in 2017 for unknown reasons. Nonetheless, in 2018, Steve was inducted as a laureate of the Lincoln Academy of Illinois and he received the Order of Lincoln, which is the highest honor given by the state. Later on, in August of 2019, Steve decided to move back to Taiwan with his family and he's been living there ever since. It looks like Steve perfectly timed that move, considering what would transpire just a couple of months later. But that's pretty much it for Steve. At the end of the day, Kareem, Chad, and Steve all ended up working at some sort of incubator company. Chad and Steve dabbled with a bit of video sharing once again, but both of them eventually ditched these efforts. And ironically, all three of these guys keep a pretty low profile online, preferring a life of peace and quiet. Were you guys familiar with the founders of YouTube? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're grateful these guys founded YouTube. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.